Hello, and welcome to this introductory webinar on patient-oriented research. It's designed for those of you who have little or no knowledge of what it means for research to be patient-oriented, and even for those who may need a bit of a refresher on this approach. So I'm Diane Obank, and I work for the Alberta SPORE Support Unit, and I'll tell you a little bit about what SPORE is uh, a few slides down. So today we're talking about uh, the roots of patient-oriented research. Where did this idea come from? And we'll define what it is and break down the elements a little bit uh, to explain a little bit more about what patient-oriented research is. And the webinar is about uh, 15 minutes long. So let's talk about the roots of patient-oriented research. Where did this come from? For one, the, there is a social and political trend to include patients in their care, for example. You might have heard uh, patient-centered care, where patients and their families or caregivers are considered part of the healthcare team, and health professionals are starting to recognize more and more the importance and value of a patient's experience. It means shared decision-making and doing what's best for the patient. This is where the expression, nothing about me, with, without me comes from. If you're going to make decisions about my health care, then include me and my family and my caregivers. So patient-oriented research is an extension of this idea that patients have a great deal to contribute to research about their own health and their own health care, and they should be part of the research team. Another impetus for patient-oriented research is what we call the pu public's growing impatience with the pace and how slowly research is moving into practice. It's often the case that research results don't have an influence on the actual healthcare system or patient care for many, many years. Some say up to 17 years after the research is done. So by having patients and families and their health providers and researchers all work together on teams, we hope to reduce this time lag of 17 years and increase the amount of research that actually gets implemented, that actually gets to the bedside. And I want to mention also that patient-oriented research could very well be uh, influenced by other research approaches that you may have heard about. Um, they're called participatory action research or community-based action research. And this is research other than health research, so social research. Um, and any other kind of uh, research where you involve the community in the research itself. So the public is part of the research that they're most affected by. So patient-oriented research is um, really growing nationally and internationally. Uh, you may have heard of Involve or PCORI and SPORE. Well, these are simply uh, organizations uh, throughout the world. They're the most well-known organizations that uh, do do patient-oriented research. So in the UK, uh, we have Involve. It's part of the National Institute for Health Research, and they support public involvement in research. PCORI in the US, or Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, started in 2010 and they fund studies uh, that help patients and those who care for them make better informed healthcare choices. In Canada, we have CIHR's Strategy for Patient-Oriented Research. CIHR, by the way, is the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. So this is a uh, funding body for health research in Canada. So their strategy, uh, which is what uh, we are part of at the Alberta Spore Support Unit, uh, began in 2011. And it aims to transform the role of patient from a passive receptor of services to a proactive partner who helps shape health research and as a result helps shape health care. So let's go get back to this definition. You may have been getting some idea now of what patient-oriented research is, but uh, how do we define it? So we say at SPORE that patient-oriented research is health research that is conducted in partnership with and by researchers, patients, healthcare researchers, 
uh, and uh, healthcare professionals and health system decision makers. So the key here is that it's health research that also includes patients. We'll talk a little bit about more what, what this means to engage patients later. So the other thing is that um, patient-oriented research prioritizes questions and measures outcomes that matter to patients. So the key words here are the priorities are those that matter to patients. And finally, patient-oriented research is health research that aims to improve healthcare outcomes. And this is just like any other healthcare research that we do. This is ultimately the aim to improve outcomes, to improve our systems and practices. So we've covered the first two um, sections of this presentation. Where did patient-oriented research come from and what's the definition? And now we'll look more closely at the different elements of patient-oriented research. And before we get too far, uh, we need to define what we mean by patient, because obviously, uh, you know, when you hear patient, you think, well, I'm a patient, I've been a patient, so how, how are you any different than patients who can be involved in research? Well, the answer is just about anybody can, but to define it, um, for the purposes of patient-oriented research, they are individuals who have a personal experience of a health issue. Now, by individuals, we mean the patients themselves um, and or their informal caregivers. So these could be, by informal caregiver, we mean the spouse, the partner, the son, daughter, a close friend who takes care of them and who have that personal experience because of it. So they have the experience with the research issue because they've lived with it. They have a life experience with it. So if the research is about diabetes, for example, patients with diabetes and their informal caregivers could be included on the research team. So next we want to make sure that if we do engage um, patients, it's meaning, meaningful and active. So it's, it's not just a check mark that you check off. It's not tokenism. It's really meaningful and active. So, and by that, we mean patients are felt that they are included. Uh, so around the research table, that their diverse perspectives are included, just like any other research team member. They feel supported. They feel safe to be on that team. They feel they know what they're doing. They can get some training to understand what the issue is about and how they're going to go about doing the research. They feel respected. So those around the table acknowledge their expertise and their experiential knowledge as critical to the research. And finally, they should be part of the building of the, the research from the very beginning to identify problems, set priorities, and work together. So it's co-built. Uh, a shorter way of saying this is how a patient themselves um, talked about what it means to have meaningful and active partnership in research. It's the feeling that you're having an impact, your voice and perspective matter, and can influence the de decisions. So really, we're trying to move patients from one end of the spectrum uh, to the other and increasing their impact on decisions. Because at one end, we may just be uh, informing uh, the, the patient about the research, uh, moving more towards more impact on decision. Maybe we consult with them when we find out about the results to obtain feedback. And this is more when they're uh, participants in a study. But to involve them means to work with them to develop uh, alternatives and then to collaborate with them. Here's where we're really talking about patient-oriented research, where they begin to partner in each aspect of the decision making. So we're really working much more closely and they have more of an impact on decisions so that they ultimately um, are empowered to make some of the research decisions themselves. So as you can imagine, it's uh, giving up command and control is not yet always easy for the researcher. 
Uh, so it can be a big culture shift. And uh, this is one of the challenges we have when we advocate for patient-oriented research. Because researchers are used to having the authority and all the power to decide what to study, and now we're suggesting they give up some of this power to patients, and it's not always an easy decision for some. So how can patients be engaged? Well, like I said, it's co-built, so they can be engaged in all aspects of the, of the research process. And some of these can be uh, identifying um, the, what the research question should be about. So what do we want to study? They might help with reviewing the literature, which simply means just doing some of the reading and doing some of the uh, information gathering about the issue. They might help design the study, give researchers an idea of, of how patients might best be involved uh, as participants of the study, how to get them to be involved. What's the best, best method to reach out to them? They might help with the writing. They might have some expertise in writing. Um, obtaining ethical approval. What, what does it mean to, to engage, to uh, have patients participate? What are the risks that patients are going to feel they have in participating? They may, uh, patient partners in research may also um, collect data, which means interviewing the participants or sending out questions and surveys and being part of fo focus groups. Uh, they might be part of analyzing that data. So once the answers come back from the questionnaires or once they have the interview um, the transcripts, then they uh, read through them and help researchers analyze what exactly the patients are saying. And finally, they, they might help with disseminate, disseminating the, the, um, the information once they find out the results, you know, disseminating the, the knowledge. So actually helping uh, get the research to the bedside or making sure the research has a, a chance to have an impact on the healthcare system and healthcare policies and health outcomes for patients. So this is called knowledge translation. So translating the knowledge from the research to the bedside, to the patient. And patients can also be on boards or advisory committees that are often part of research. So we, I just want a uh, side note here to talk about this focus on patient identified priorities. Um, as mentioned, traditionally researchers have set the research agenda. Often patients have very different priorities than would researchers. For example, in one study uh, uh, around uh, osteoarthritis research, um, they looked at they asked patients what their priorities would be for osteoarthritis research. And the answers, uh, the top answers were physiotherapy, surgery, and educational and coping strategies. Interestingly enough, when they looked at what research was being done, 80% were about drug evaluations. So you can see how patient priorities may be very different from what the research community is studying. And why are they so different? Well, it could be that researchers are looking at how best to reduce pain through medication, and that they think is important. But the patient might be more concerned with how the medication affects their quality of life. For example, um, pain medication might reduce pain, but it might also leave the person feeling really dizzy. And so they can't drive their car, and they feel so socially isolated because they can't get out. And that is worse than the pain for them. But how would the researcher know that? So the, the patient might be more interested in other ways of coping with their pain through what they've listed here, physiotherapy, surgery, and, and coping strategies. So the other uh, element of patient-oriented research is, uh, we've looked at two elements so far, meaningful patient engagement, patient-identified priorities, now we want to look at uh, an aim that is a little more altruistic and obviously a little more difficult to achieve, and that's improving patient outcomes. And all health research aims to do that. Um, and specifically, what we say it's for is patient-oriented research is a, about ensuring that the right patient receives the right intervention at the right time um, so that they are really having a say in making sure they get the right intervention 
in a timely manner. So just to summarize a little bit, um, if you are doing patient-oriented research or you want to decide whether someone's research is patient-oriented, you look for these three criteria. Um, does it engage patients as partners? So some of the questions you might ask is, um, does the researcher have patient partners on the research team? And are these partners meaningfully engaged? And we talked about what it meant to be meaningfully engaged. Does it focus on patient identified priorities? Can you or the researcher demonstrate that the research idea is a priority for patients? So have you gone out and asked patients if it's a priority? Does it improve healthcare outcomes, systems and practices? Um, well, the best way to know whether research will do that is, do they have a plan to get the research to the bedside? So will it be used in the near future, not 17 years down the road, for policy and practice improvement? So that's it for the uh, short introduction. Um, we suggest you visit CIHR's website to find out more about Canada's strategy for patient-oriented research. You can also visit the Alberta Spore Support Unit's website at abscoreu.ca for more information. And uh, you can always email us at uh, sporab at ualberta.ca. Thank you very much.